saying that Adam's one act of disobedience, he disobeyed God. And Christ, one act of obedience, brought eternal life. What was Christ being obedient to? He was being obedient to the law. All right? The law was given, and the text just read, the law was given to, to show the trespass, to sh- increase the level of which we've offended God. The law was given to show God's character, His standard of perfection that we would never, ever meet on our own. It's like He dangled a carrot out there. says, this is my character. This is my standard of perfection. You're never going to ever get there on your own. You'll always fall woefully short Today, tomorrow, and the next day, you're never going to get there. But Jesus did. Jesus came to fulfill that law. All ten of them, man. All of it, its entirety. Perfect. Never sin one time. So you could say that your salvation is based upon a work. Not your work, but the work of Christ on the cross. He fulfilled the law. He imputed obedience to you. Because you and I were going to be disobedient to the law our whole lives. And he says, I'll be obedient to the law. I'm the only one that can. And by the way, that's the standard you've got to meet before you stand before God. He's, you, have to have, you have to be per- perfection. You have to have a standard of perfection before you get to God. And Jesus said, I'll do it for you. I'll take your place. I'll be obedient so you can be obedient in me. Here's the, the, the incredible, incredible exchange we've looked at all through this, is that on the day of judgment, okay, Adam or Jesus are going to represent all men. 